There's no Domas. There's no problem. LTU time. Hello, I'm Eric Ryan, Ball in Europe here once again. And before we get into our big discussion today, which is essentially what to expect or how far Lithuania can go at the 2023 FIBA World Cup, I want to give a big thank you to everybody. We've passed the 1,000 mark in subs. That's amazing. It means we're now eligible to be monetized, basically, so we can get ads, stuff like that, all through the channel. Odds are won't actually be formally through until after the FIBA World Cup, but listen, that's the way the, the ball bounces. But uh, anyway, huge thanks to you, and if you're watching this and you haven't previously subscribed, please do, like, the more the merrier. We want to get as many people joining this basketball discussion as we can. And yeah, today we're here to talk about Lithuania at the upcoming FIBA World Cup. And we've got to talk, before we talk about the challenge ahead, why this is a particularly big challenge. So we've got to go back to 2015, which uh, is eight years, which is a long time. It's also the last time FIBA tournament play witnessed Lithuania win a game in the knockout stages in an actual tournament, which is a long time for, you know, a, a nation we just associate with basketball, a nation that's sort of, you know, one of the guys, so to speak, in European basketball. And I even actually recall the moment uh, after that in particular, because it was a bit of an upset win in the semi-final over Serbia. I think that's safe to say. Uh, maybe not to Lithuanian fans, but certainly for the average person going in because of the way Serbia had played going into that. And I'll never forget the look on Kozlauskas' face. Kozlauskas' face. Uh, I nearly said Komaleshko there, which is Jarosz, excuse me. On Kozlauskas' face, running through the mixed zone there in Lille. Like, it was totally like, <laughs> boys, I gotcha, we gotcha. Because he knew he'd punched their ticket to the Olympics. Uh, and that, like, you know, he caught people, sort of, you know, not expecting much. And it's kind of been weird since then, because group play, by and large, for Lithuania since then has been fine, and they've just sort of face padded since 2017, looked fantastic in the group stage, and got just dumped on by a Greece side that frankly did not look very good at that tournament. I remember we were coming in thinking, oh, the Lithuania side should go pretty far. And then, like, just laid an absolute egg. Like, they were awful in that game, and I'm not telling anything any Lithuanian fans don't know. Subsequently, next World Cup, 2019, um, went out in the round of, uh, I saw 16, but it was a group stage thing, and basically lost their first game in that group phase to France, which was, for all intents and purposes, an elimination game, and that was them done. So, you know, that didn't go well. Failed to qualify for the Olympics for the first time since independence from the USSR. Kind of a big deal when you're in Lithuania. And then, of course, we have the small matter of the most recent Eurobasket, where they probably should have beaten Spain in the round of 16. Like, they did everything right in order to, like, give Spain the fright of their lives. And then OT just, no, didn't work out. And they went out, and of course, we know Spain, being Spain, went on to win the whole bloody thing. So, like, there's those missed opportunities, which have just sort of plagued Lithuania, and Getting to Paris is obviously a very, very big deal. Like, you know, it's very hard to describe, I say this before about the Philippines, but it is very hard to describe just, you know, the level of expectation of the, Phil of the Philippines, of the Lithuania national basketball team in Lithuania. But really the expectation is kind of big across Europe. We kind of expect you all to deliver. And, you know, for eight years now, you haven't. Uh, you know, you've been fine, but you've not been the Lithuania that always finds a way. And that's the big shocker here, really. And where they can go find a way is an issue. But there is a route to Paris through this tournament. And I don't think it's anywhere near implausible. In fact, I think it's extremely plausible for this Lithuania side. Let's discuss the route. The group phase is obviously where it all starts. Egypt, Mexico, Montenegro. About as nice a draw, I think, as Lithuania could have asked for for the opening group phase. Because I know you're going to say, what about group phase two? Yes, yes, we'll get to that. But for the opening group phase, I don't think Lithuania could have asked for a nicer draw. They should win all of those games. Even Montenegro at absolute full strength shouldn't be enough against this Lithuania side if this Lithuania side, and you know I've been qualifying it, because basically Lithuania minus a bonus, that's what we're trying to say, plays to its caliber, to its potential, to the level it should be at. 
that'll Lithuania will also know pretty much how they're set going into that game because they should know they should get past Egypt and we really expect them to get past Mexico. We should really know how they're set up for entering phase two after that. So let's go with what I think will actually happen, which is Lithuania go 3-0 and in the group phase. Brilliant. That means they've got one win already for phase two uh, on, the, on the books because obviously their games from phase one count, but they've got one game that wouldn't that matters from phase two for phase one in the books. Obviously it goes to sort of your, your combined record, but realistically you've got to expect the combined records of the others will cancel each other out. If things go chalk, which is not a guarantee, uh, it'll be USA and Greece joining them. Now New Zealand may have a few words to say about that. I am going to just go and say not now, <laughs> basically. Uh, so. We're going to put USA and Greece in there. That would mean, again, if we're going to talk on seedings, it's Greece versus Lithuania in that first game day. And it's very reminiscent of that 2017 round of 16 situation because while Lithuania may not be at their full strength, Greece are missing a lot of serious talent. It's far more than Giannis. Like, there's no Slukas. There's so many guys missing. And it's essentially a case of, will Lithuania do what they did in 2017 again? And if they've learned those lessons and... You're kind of good enough that you should have. This is a game Lithuania should win. Can they beat the current USA side? Yes. Do I think they will? No. Am I certain of either of those answers? No. So I'm not certain about that. But I'm going to be kind here. And I'm going to say Lithuania, beat Greece, lose to USA, have their 4-1 record going into the quarterfinals. That's where things get very, very interesting very, very fast, obviously, because... Lithuania, like we said, haven't won a true elimination game since 2015 in an international tournament, which is just wild to say out loud. And if we're going to talk, because obviously it gets a lot harder to map out the deeper you go into a 32-team tournament, which has a double round system, it makes the, 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 the prognostications a bit harder. So I'm just going to go chalk here and say Serbia, which is, I think, the most likely, but that's far from a lot, is what we're saying. What I will say is, based on the way the draw is going, it's not an impossible opponent. And again, it's a team, whoever they get, just based on the various things, you can look at the FIBA site for more of it. It should be a winnable game, which and not necessarily say one of Lithuania be favoured, but not one they should be heavy underdogs in either. So Lithuania, I feel confident, can make the quarterfinals. And I will actually say I believe they will make the quarters. If I'm drawing my little chalk chart up today, I'm saying yes. They will get a winnable quarterfinal. And that's huge, because if they can get to a winnable quarterfinal, we're talking about the top two places in Europe suddenly in the tournament. Anything before that, we're not, let's be honest. It is entirely likely that even if the USA completely faceplant in the last eight, one of the four teams in the semifinals will not be European. It is extremely possible that two of them won't be. Because you look at the strength of Canada, you look at the strength of Australia, and if you're a European nation, you know, get to the semis, we've probably punched our Olympic ticket. That's a pretty big deal. So, for Lithuania, that has to be the goal. And I think their route to the semis, like, it's not, it's never going to be easy, obviously. But it could be a lot, lot worse. So now let's talk about what Lithuania have to do in terms of the roster they have. Like, obviously, you know, we, we can talk about the Zalgiris contingent, we can talk about the mixture of LKL guys, uh, you know, we've got, we got one Sassari player as well, but an awful lot of this is going to come down really to those big, impressive shoulders of Jonas Valanciunas. And it's managing Valanciunas far more than anything else the key here, because especially when you get to those uh, group stage two games, and especially the knockout stages, Teams are going to be looking to, you know, get him in foul trouble. That will be a key, key target because they know just how much damage he can do the longer he stays on the floor. So essentially, your goal is to put Jonas in positions where he doesn't have to worry about foul trouble. Like, to me, above all else, if you're going to be riding that Valence Jonas train, your plan should be how we operate to make ourselves as big a nuisance as possible, as in tiring, uh, you know, frustrating... Uh, obviously still competitive, don't get me wrong, but that's almost like a way down the list uh, priority. Forcing the other side into fouls, just basically pests. You want to be pests when Jonas isn't on the floor. And that may sound a bit harsh, but like it's not. This is entirely about ensuring your best asset is kept in the best 
condition, and I don't just mean athletic, but I mean psychologically. You don't want him worrying about those fouls in the back of his head. Like, we all know what a trooper Jonas has been for Team LTU, like going back to the 2012 Olympic qualifiers. I recall him really putting in a stint there when he was far from the star, but he was a guy on the up. Uh, I think we've seen, you know, the work he's put in, the effort he puts in when he wears that jersey. And if you want to get the most out of him, especially with no Sabonis, you've got to be thinking about how we put Jonas in a situation where he can be comfortable. If he's always going to be confident, he will always be a man, especially in that jersey, built on raw confidence to play for Lithuania. But you'll want to make sure there's nothing even subconscious there to mess with him. You'll want to reduce that risk of foul trouble, essentially. So if you do that, a lot of that comes into your second unit, being the pests, being the nuisances, being the guys who suddenly realize they're the, these are the ones we've got to have pick up the fouls. And uh, it sounds odd, but, you know, yeah, it's keeping Jonas clean, essentially. Keeping him, you know, a man who's more than willing to do the dirty work. I think we can happily say that about Jonas Valanciunas in a Lithuania jersey. Keeping him from having to do as much of it as he usually does, essentially, is what you want to do. So, yeah. I feel that the loss in Eurobasket last year, while obviously bad at the time, might have been a bit of a wake-up call to some of the younger guys on the side uh, in terms of realising that this is the extra level we need to get to when we're at knockout play. I think that's going to stand to them a bit. Can they go medal? Poss go get a medal. I don't think they're going to get a gold medal. Sorry, folks. It's not implausible, but I would be betting against it right now. But right now... A few days before I fly, I'm saying Lithuania makes it to the quarterfinals. I'm not saying semifinals, though, but I'm saying that is plausible, which is, you know, not the worst. But I will say quarterfinals for Lithuania. Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think I'm too nice? Do you think I'm too kind? Do you think I'm too harsh? Do you think I'm too mean? Let me know in the comments below. Listen, thank you all again for your great support. Keep spreading the love, showing the love to each other, be nice to each other. And there should be a video here about not just a bonus, but other stars who are missing from the World Cup and why we're seeing so few of them appear in Philippines, Japan and Indonesia this, this summer. It's kind of autumn really, isn't it? Summer autumn, we'll say. Why we're seeing so few of them travel. So that should be up here somewhere. Uh, catch you all soon.